Մեծ եղրնի նվիրված ձեռնակներից նյուրկ հայության կյանքում ամենահանրաշատը շուրջ 30 տարի համարվում է Մանհատնի Times Square-ում կազմակերպվող ձեռնարկը, ու ներգրավված են լինում հիմնականում ամերիկյան սենատորներ, կոնգրեսմեններ, քաղաքական գործիչներ, արվեստագետներ եւ շատ ու շատ այլ նշանավոր մարդիկ վարթանած ասպետների նախաձեռնությամբ։ Բացման խոսքից ամերիկյան եւ հայկական քայլերից Կիլիկոթեմի առաջնորդ օշական արքեպիսկոպոս Շոլեանի բացման աղոթքից հետո հաջորդեց աղավնիների բաց թողնման արարողությունը ուր հարուրամիակի կապակցությամբ հարյուր աղավնի սլացավ երկինք կարծես մեր նահատակների հոգու փրկության համար։ Այնուհետև իդար հետեւեցին քաղաքական գործիչների ելույթները։ I have come here faithfully uh, every year since I have been uh, in the United States Congress as part of this commemoration and I am honored to be here again to commemorate the centennial anniversary of one of the darkest events in human history an event that we can never forget an event that has been misrepresented and debated for a century but today let that debate end right here right now we keep faith with all who stand up to injustice anywhere and everywhere in the world we honor those who lost their lives we remember how they died we pledge ourselves to change the way history remembers their deaths to me all men and women of good will recognize that genocide is genocide plain and simple i know it you know it and last week his holiness pope francis said in a historic acknowledgement that he knows it as well he called the events of 100 years ago the first genocide of the century and he in fact is right Last year as the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee I was proud for the first time to be able to pass a Armenian genocide commemoration resolution through the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and this year a bipartisan group of senators I have been privileged to have joined me are pushing a resolution in the Senate that commemorates the 100th anniversary of the Armenian genocide and it calls on president obama to formally recognize the armenian genocide as genocide that is a lesson that we must stand together against all crimes against humanity my resolution affirms in the strongest possible terms that the armenian genocide was a horrifying factual reality that can never be denied never be diminished never mischaracterized and never be forgotten that we will always honor the memory of the 1.5 million innocent men women and children who were killed or expelled from their home by Ottoman Turkey 100 years ago it is time for our nation to recognize the truth It is time for the United States of America to lead globally on human rights. It is time for us to join the European Union and 11 of our NATO allies in officially recognizing the Armenian genocide. In my view, We must not make it the policy of the United States to turn our back on man's inhumanity to man. We cannot turn our backs on the victims. Not in Armenia 1915, not anywhere that genocide occurs. And any time that we do so, we only serve to empower those around the world who would use genocide as a weapon of war. Now I am deeply disappointed that President Obama has lost his moral compass on this issue and that we allow Turkey to have a veto on our own domestic decision. He was right as Senator Obama that what happened at that time was genocide and we as a nation need to be right and declare it genocide today. 
Now let me close. Let me close by saying I don't believe that the pressure of any ally should be sufficient to dictate what our policy and beliefs in are in our country. And that's why the resolution that I've introduced in the Senate is a sign that our government is doing what it must to acknowledge the truth and recognize the events of a hundred years ago as the first example of man's inhumanity to their fellow man in the last century so that we can prevent such acts from happening again in this century. And I conclude with what Henry Morgan thought. Our United States Ambassador to the Ottoman Empire said in 1919, when he explained in official cables to the United States government what he had seen. He said, quote, when the Turkish authorities gave the orders for these deportations, they were merely giving the death warrant to a whole race. They understood this well. And in their conversations with me, they did they made no particular attempt to conceal the fact. Morgenthau went on to say, I am confident that the whole history of the human race contains no such horrible episode as this. The great massacres and persecutions of the past seem almost insignificant when compared to the suffering of the Armenian race in 1915. These were the words of someone who stood witness to history and called it what it was. Someone who knew firsthand what happened and why. So today, let us pledge to remember the significance of the suffering of the Armenian people in 1915 as Ambassador Morgenthau described it. And let our response to Adolf Hitler's question when he was thinking about the beginning of exterminating the Jewish people and he was cautioned and he said, well, who remembers the Armenians? Our answer today and forever is we remember the Armenians. We remember the 1.5 men, women and children who lost their lives. We remember and honor their survivors and we will never, never, ever forget. I just want to say, that I know many of you say, well, you know, how much have we accomplished since our own country has not yet in the Congress recognized the Armenian Genocide? But I want you to know you've accomplished a great deal. I don't care whether it was in Armenia where I was on Friday with all the different delegations and the countries that have recognized the genocide, or if it was in Constantinople or Istanbul where there was such a crowd that showed up to demand that Turkey recognize the genocide, or it was in LA where I understand there were over 30 or 40,000 people that showed up for a similar ceremony. The fact is that you have made great progress in getting over 40 states in our country. How many countries around the world, the European Union, the Pope, and the intellectuals, and many people even in Turkey, who today recognize the genocide because of the efforts of the diaspora that have made it possible for more and more people to know about the Armenian genocide. And I want you to know that those of us in the Armenian caucus, both Democrats and Republicans, who showed up for the commemoration that we had on Wednesday in DC, many of us, we strongly believe that we need to have genocide recognition. And even though we haven't passed a resolution in Congress, we in the Armenian caucus will not rest until the United States Congress and the President of the United States declare that the Armenian genocide was in fact the genocide. And we also believe strongly that we must make Turkey recognize it. And we have to have Turkey pay reparations and basically acknowledge the genocide and all the consequences of it. And beyond that, we want to have peace in Armenia. We want international recognition of Karabakh that makes sure that Karabakh remains Armenian either as an independent state or as part of the Republic of Armenia. We want to have diplomatic recognition by Turkey and Azerbaijan and all the Caucasus, Caucasus nations of Armenia. These are the things that we insist on that we'll continue to work on and work with you for the rest of our lives. When I was in Yerevan on Friday, uh, there was a, a, a motto 
that was translated into English that said, I remember and I demand. I remember the Armenian genocide, as all of you do, and I demand U.S. recognition. I demand Turkish recognition. I demand that Karabakh be part of Armenia and an international recognition. I demand that the countries around Armenia recognize it, Armenia as an independent state. And with your help, those remembrance and those demands will become reality. Thank you very much. I would like to be with, I am proud to be with you, to take a moment to acknowledge the Armenian, the survivors and descendants of the Armenian genocide who are here with us today. Though it's been a hundred years since this atrocity, to the few survivors who are still with us, it must seem like only yesterday. And for so many others in this audience who have parents, grandparents, great aunts, great uncles, relations of all kinds who were slaughtered in Armenia during this terrible time, we honor you as well as many others who lived through the Mets Yekern. They remember their stories, they are imprinted in memory, and they come here each year to commemorate and push for more widespread recognition. And I say here and now, I stand with you and labeling the atrocity committed on the Armenian people for what it was, genocide. It was genocide. We know that no denier can take that away. The size of this crowd, your energy, your collective spirit shows that after a hundred years, the deniers cannot kill the truth. In fact, even though we are a hundred years after this atrocity, the momentum is growing to commemorate the Armenian genocide and force the Turks to admit it once and for all. <laughs> the size of this crowd is a tribute to the survivors and to the vibrancy of the Armenian community in New York and in America. Over the past century, political movements have gained steam and have been abandoned. Empires and nations have written and fallen, risen and fallen, but you are still here. You are testament to those who tried to wipe out the Armenian people, that they are gone and we are here. And we will remember and we will commemorate. Why are we here? for many reasons, but we know this. It matters because to secure our place as a civilized people in Armenia and here in America and indeed in every corner of the globe, we must call out evil for what it is. We must stare directly into the heart of darkness and answer the questions, how did it happen? Who was responsible? Who answered the call for help? and who ran from responsibility. When people are forced to confront these questions, it makes it much less likely that another Holocaust, another genocide, will ever happen again. On this day, the sacred centennial of the Armenian genocide our responsibility to remember the abuses in history and sober reflection upon them is as important as ever. Because although the Armenian Genocide was the first Holocaust of the 20th century, it was unfortunately not the last. Untold millions suffered as a result of the lessons denied and unlearned. From Hitler's Germany, to Stalin's Ukraine, to Pol Pot's Cambodia, to the Balkans, to Rwanda, 
and to Sudan. These events are more than just a stain on their nations or their continent. They are a stain on humanity. And so, I am so proud that Pope Francis recently said about the Armenian Genocide that concealing or denying evil is allowing a wound to keep bleeding without bandaging it. Time and time again we promise we have learned a lesson, that we will stop these crimes from being repeated. We must never fail to keep that promise. And while America cannot be the world's policeman and have soldiers in every corner of the globe, we must always be the moral compass that awakens the conscience of the world when the lives of innocent millions hang in the balance. So in conclusion, my colleagues, again, I stand with you in labeling the atrocity committed a hundred years ago to the Armenian people for what it was, genocide. I stand with you in making sure the deniers are not given any place under the sun. I stand with you in requiring and demanding the Turkish government tell the truth. I stand with you in being so proud of you and this great Armenian community in Armenia and in America. The people of Armenia live. I am so honored to be with you today because today we remember 100 years ago the Ottoman Empire launched a brutal attack on Armenians living in the territories. It was the start of the greatest crimes against humanity in documented history. Over 1.5 million innocent men, women, and children perished. Some murdered outright, others were driven from their houses, and thousands died on the road. Contemporary newspaper reports documented it. And our U.S. representative to the Turkish state Ambassador Morgenthau expressed concern that the Turkish government was knowingly giving the death warrant to a whole race of a people. That was from the American ambassador to Turkey. And yet, even today, the Turkish government refuses to call this well-documented slaughter of the Armenian people what it was and is, genocide. I support Resolution 154, which calls upon the American government to join other governments around the world and scholars in Turkey in acknowledging what is plainly the fact. Murder is murder, mass killing is mass killing, and genocide is genocide. By refusing to acknowledge this crime, we as human beings are condoning future atrocities. In preparing to launch his terrible final solution, Hitler gave a, a, a reason to do it by saying, who remembers the, the Armenians? Who remembers the slaughter of the Armenians? Well, we are here today to say the whole world must remember. It must be in the textbooks. It must be recognized, not only by Turkey, but every country in the world. And that is why we must speak out about the genocide. We must teach it in our schools. We must create museums about it. We must speak at these rallies on the floor of Congress and why we must never, ever let anyone forget what happened to millions and millions of Armenians because their tragedy is our tragedy and because no nation should ever imagine that the world will not notice if they try to wipe out another group of people because we remember the Jews, we remember the Tutsis, and we remember the Cambodians. And today, in particular, we remember the Armenians, the first Christian church. What a legacy. We will be with you until it is in the textbooks of Turkey. We will remember the Armenians. Thank you. Look around at all the beautiful family we have here today. We are here to say something very special this year. Do you feel it? 
This year is different. This year is our year. The world is listening. The Pope is listening. The countries are listening. The people are listening. My family is here, my beautiful children, my wife, to share this story that must be told. So I, as a council member, brought a proclamation letting you know the entire city council has recognized the genocide. It is a beautiful, beautiful document. I want you to read it when you get a chance. I will leave it here with our Archbishop Barsami and a dear friend of mine. Another beautiful thing has happened. Did you hear the bells toll on Friday? Was that not beautiful? And I was at Holy Martyrs Friday night with Father, Barsami, uh, Father Abraham, and he gave a beautiful eulogy. And he said, we have new holy martyrs. We have 1.5 million new holy martyrs. They are now saints within the Armenian community. Isn't that not beautiful? It is that passion of the Armenian community of family, faith, hard work, of always standing together, of being proud Americans, of being prouder Armenians. That's what binds this community. And that's what makes it so beautiful to stand today. We were at Queens College and Queensborough College at Kufferberg Center on Friday night as we stood and honored and beautiful reflections of the past of what must be done. And Saturday at St. Sarkis and Holy Martyrs again, we were together celebrating and making sure the world could hear. And now we're here today, everyone. See, raise your voices again so everyone can hear you. Armenia! 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 Beautiful! I have Assemblyman Dave Weprin here. Come, Dave. I'd like to read this. There are just two paragraphs. I'm going to shorten this, but they are beautiful paragraphs. And even for the children, if you can listen to what it says. On April 24th, 1915, in the midst of World War I, several hundred Armenian community leaders were invited by the government of Turkey to meet in Istanbul for a discussion of political reforms, only to become victims of a mass murder. Among things this genocide, Armenians were forced to witness the rape, mutilation, and slaughter of their loved ones, the desecration of the churches, the looting of their personal property, the dispossession of their real property, and the loss of their ancestral homeland. The Armenian genocide was the worst atrocity of World War I, and its bitter legacy has been compounded by a century of painful silence in denial by many. Today, the ancestral homeland taken has been returned to the Armenian people, nor have the Armenians received any compensation for their losses. 100 years later, we continue to remember those who perished, like most of the world's population. We remain committed to truth, justice, and accountability that we, the undersigned, the council members, are proud to recognize and commemorate that the Armenian Genocide's 100th anniversary in New York City forever. Today does not merely mark the centennial of the annihilation of some 1.1 million Armenians. It also marks a century of denial of this crime. The Turkish government continues to deny not merely any responsibility for the horrors inflicted upon Armenian people, but even the fact that it happened at all. As a Turk, it is from this fact that my sorrow and great shame derive. My sole consolation is that I do not grieve alone. The nation of Turkey consists of more than simply its denialist regime. There is another Turkey, and the citizens of that Turkey are ready to face their history. It is those Turks who feel obligated to erase the black stain left by those who committed these crimes. In more than 25 cities, from Istanbul to Van, the people of this Turkey have not waited for the nihilist government to recognize the genocide. Instead, they have been blazing a new path, one that allows them to discover their past. I'm not an official representative of this other Turkey, but I know I speak for many when I convey to you, the Armenian people, my sincere apologies for both the past crimes and for this century of denial. Here, 
as I stand before you today, I can, I can promise in name of this other Turkey to do everything in our power to finally put an end to this denialism. Our history is not merely a chronicle of murderers. It is also a history of brave and righteous people who risk their lives to, to save thousands of Armenians. And it is only through the recognition and honoring of these people that we can hope to build a better future. While we should indeed today condemn those crimes committed and the refusal to acknowledge them, we must also acknowledge our debt to those who refuse to participate or actively oppose them. Such persons have taught us through their example that human decency and courage can indeed survive in times of great evil. Recognition of my country's historic wrongs is not simply important for the sake of historic accuracy. Instead, it directly concerns the kind of society that we envision for our future. Dehumanization is the most important component of all mass atrocities. In order to be able to kill perpetrators, first dehumanize their victims. Recognition of the crime is necessary for restoring this humanity, for returning to the victims their dignity. Without this recognition, subsequent generations cannot properly mourn and heal. Mourning and healing are necessary for closer and can only come after the truth is acknowledged. If we fail to do so, we inadvertently lend legitimization to perpetrators and their goals. After the case of denials, you Armenians need to heal and to be assured that the justice you seek will be attained. Any, any reconciliation between Turks and Armenians will have to be built on a foundation of acknowledged truth. Without truth, there cannot be peace. And I am here to assure you in name of this other Turkey that we are determined to continue to struggle until the truth shall finally prevail. A hundred years ago, the Ottoman government had a flaw concept of national security. They viewed the Armenians and their demands for equality and social justice as a threat to the Ottoman state and society. They targeted the Armenians for extermination. Today, in Turkey, Turkish and Armenian children are taught through textbooks published by the education ministry that the Armenians continue today to pose a threat to Turkish national security. These textbooks are filled with hateful and racist remarks against Armenians and are steeped in distorted narratives about treacherous Armenians. It is very troubling to see that the United States has still not officially recognized the Armenian genocide. The justification for their position remained the same. The crucial role of Turkey in the country's geopolitical security strategy. To raise a moral argument regarding a century-old event, they argue, would needless anger their Turkish ally and jeopardize Armenian security, American security interests. Turkey continues its denialist policy because it has yet to face serious external pressure to the otherwise. All that is lacking is external pressure from international community. The United States has thus fast continued 
to support the denialist regime in Turkey. But how can the United States, which pride itself on its exceptionalism in supporting liberal values and human rights at home and across the world, justify the position at odds with its own democratic values? America should not uphold human rights only when it's expedient. The test of American exceptionalism is the commitment to preserve in upholding this principle even when it may seem costly or inconvenient to do so. By officially recognizing the Armenian genocide, the United States could land its moral and political weight to encourage Turkey to come to terms with its history, to further embrace democratization and to contribute to its own future stability and that of the region. The citizens of my Turkey, the other Turkey and the Armenians throughout the world are waiting for the United States to join us in acknowledging the truth. Again, again, I thank you for allowing me to address to you here on this day of both sorrow and hope. Let us remember and honor the victims and continue to fight together for truth and justice. We are here standing united against genocides on the side of memory and history and peace and humanity and justice and truth. Look around you, see, you're not alone. We are standing together, not because we are Armenian, because we are people, people whose lives are bound up in the history of our world, in the values of our shared humanity. We are standing because every Armenian life wasted on the altar of inhumanity is a loss to us all. We are here because a century after their deaths, we say that their lives, every life, still matters. We are here because the genocide of the Armenians, which began a century ago, will scar our world for millennia to come. We are here remembering that when, when women and children were dragged out of their homes and sent into the desert and the fear and the pain and the cold and the heat and the hunger and the thirst and the rope and the bullets were all tools of genocidal government that determined that those people would die simply and only because they were Armenians. We are here to speak out on behalf of the silenced because we will not be silenced, not in their name, not in ours, not in mine. We will not be silent. We will speak truth to genocide. Listen, the bells toll 100 times for 100 years of loss and agonizing sorrow. Where are the children who should have been born, the lives that should have been lived, the hearts that should have loved? Where is the laughter in the streets, the hopes and the dreams of a lost generation? Where are the memories, the family trees that should have grown lush in their fertile soil, uprooted, wilted in the cruelty of our hostile world? It was no accident that women and children burned up in the desert sun. No accident that town by town, street by street, house by house, one by one, homes were emptied, lives destroyed, until there was no one left to speak the unspeakable pain. It was no accident of history or strange fate or misfortune that befell them, no consequence of war or famine, it was designed, it was planned, it was ordered. The foreboding of a century of genocide, that crime of crimes, the attempt to destroy the Armenians wherever they were to be found, to destroy that ethnic and religious group by killing members of that group, causing serious bodily harm to members of that group, 
deliberately inflicting on members of that group conditions of life that calculated to bring about their physical destruction, imposing measures on that group intended to prevent births, forcibly transferring children of that group to another. And that, by definition, we call genocide. I want to talk about an individual for a moment because there's a lot of back and forth about genocide. Raphael Lemkin. Raphael Lemkin is the individual who invented the term. Raphael Lemkin is the person that came to the United Nation in the 1950s and said, we need to create a crime against humanity. And he created the word genocide. And do you know what inspired him? Do you know what inspired him to create that word? It was the Armenian Genocide. His family was a victim of the Holocaust, but before the Holocaust happened, he saw what happened to your people. And he said, we cannot stand by and ever let this happen again. And because of him, genocide is a crime against humanity. And if you look throughout the ages, 21 years ago, 21 years ago in Rwanda, 800,000 people were slaughtered in three months. And if you go to the tapes from the State Department in our country, you see the spokespeople trying to use any word they can but genocide. Because when the word genocide is used, action must be taken. President Clinton, President Bill Clinton has said that his greatest failure in his presidency was Rwanda. He said we could not have saved 800,000, but we could have saved 300,000. And what is going on today in Turkey is an embarrassment to the world. It is an embarrassment not to call it for what it is. It is a hundred years. How long will it take till they can use the word genocide? And I am telling you here and now, the way genocide happens is because bullies rise up and no one says a word to them because people get scared, they are bullied. And what the Turks are doing now in Turkey is bullying behavior. And we must, this country must stand up and call it for what it was, call it a genocide. When you come to our museum on 42nd Street, we have a film on genocide and we call it that. And I'm telling you today, someone in the back said to me, you don't look Armenian. I said I'm not, but today I am. And I want especially to speak to all the young people here, the next generation, your generation. In today's day and age, you will know through social media when horrible things are happening around the globe. We know what's happening in Nigeria to those poor girls. We know what's happening with ISIS, killing people. How great was Pope Francis calling it for what it was, the genocide. But Christians are being butchered by ISIS today. You, the next generation, you must call it for what it is. You must figure out a way. This started with a million and a half Armenians being butchered and slaughtered. We need to end it. We need to make sure that genocide is called what it is and we stand up and we stop it, no matter if it's the Armenians, the Rwandans, the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, or whoever. As citizens, as citizens of humanity, we must stop crimes against humanity. As a child out of family circumstance, I was raised by my Armenian grandmother, Bartui, Grandma Rose. She raised me on Armenian food, on Armenian music, on Armenian love. And I have never known another love that compares to it. Winning an Academy Award was a dream come true for me, but it was a dream afforded to me only by the unfathomable journey that my grandmother took. 
When she died in 1989, I felt separated from my Armenian roots. And yet, 26 years later, I am here in the middle of this magnificent gathering, and I am home. Yelut Unetsoneri Mechen Naev Rwanda i Kotorazneri Vera Progner, Hayam Vani Groch, bestseller Chris Borchalian, Yev Shatur Shat Al Nishanavol Marti. Idir Karvestov Handes Yekav America i Martin Bavakanin Haitni Yerkir Sebu Simonian. Vartanan Zaspetneri, America is the highest gain has not been. America is the highest gain has not been. America is the highest gain has not been. Pakman Khoskov is a good coach. Handles the cup. Each match not can team is not. Khajak Arkepiskopos Parsamian. Michotzarom is a packet. New York is a high musician. Arani Yerchakhumba. God bless America. Katarumov. Our fans are very much in love with Michotzarom. Grand Svetsia was Mian Nahade Pajotun. He was Mikhail Melidaunk Neri Parta Derman. New York Hayutan, Patmutan Mech, Ir Nahade Pachunetso as Michotza Roma, Urma Saksets Avalikan Tassazar Mart, Apatsuzet Ludash Hari, Vornunisk Megdarans, Vochin Chimoratsvel, Yev Amenichi Arjani Ganahatakana Petkestana. I Sameni Giragun Hajotun, nor Serendin Nera Rumne. Can you walk away? Ir a water no pahanja tere naeli nello. Yev shauna kello e bolora in na vachum nere vor arvele min chevima. Ayo, haru ramiak nello ratsav. Mere an mech na hatak neli. Pats mere gortsun e tsun e chida tharets. Yev chpiti da thari ayin kan zamanak min chev che bawar arven mere bolor pahanj nere. Bolor. Is pakman khoskum kuzena ishtora kalishon hayt nello haru ramiak hans na khambin. Իր հսկայած ավալ եւ կանոնավոր աշխատանքի համար։ Դե ինչ, գետցեք տղերք, ձեր վարձքը կատար։ 